Hello Grade Sevens, Helen here again with you today, which means we are learning about natural sciences. We've been learning about the physical properties of materials, and the physical property that we're going to explore today is conductivity. So what have we looked at in the past? In previous lessons, we've explored physical properties or what we mean by physical properties, distinctive characteristics that describe an object or the material that an object is made out of. We've looked at strength, we've looked at flexibility, boiling point and melting point. And today we're looking at conductivity, which is quite a mouthful. So let's first unpack that English word conductivity to see and to understand what it means. Because if we understand what the English word means, we'll be able to understand a little bit more about what the concept of conductivity is when we look at it from a science perspective. So what is conductivity? Well, if we take the word conduct, and we find out what it means, we see that it means a whole lot of things. It could mean your behavior. So your conduct was bad, and that is why you were punished. Conduct also could mean how something is managed or run, how we conduct business, how we make sure that we conduct the business to make sufficient money. Conduct can also mean to lead or to guide. So I'm sure you've seen orchestras where one person is standing in front and is conducting the orchestra, telling them when to play fast, when to play slow and quietly. They are leading or guiding the orchestra members. But all of those words and meanings have nothing to do with science. If we look at the word conduct as it applies to science, it means to transmit, to carry, to convey. You see that these are all synonyms or words that mean a similar thing, transfer, pass on. All of these are synonyms for the word conduct. So when we're looking at conductivity from a science perspective, we see that it means transmitting, conveying, passing on. We can see that it comes into many different aspects of science. For example, in life sciences, your blood is conducted around your body in blood vessels. Your food is conducted from your mouth down to your stomach by your esophagus or your gullet. Air is conducted from the outside to your lungs in passageways called bronchi. So we can see that it has an application in life sciences. But at the moment, we're not studying life sciences. We're looking at physical sciences. So we're narrowing down our definition of the concept of conduct and conductivity. In physical sciences, we're talking about a passage of energy through a material. So we can see that it's a passage, it's a transfer, it's a passing on, but particularly what is being passed on, it's not blood, it's not food, it's not oxygen, it's energy. So in physical sciences, we're interested in the way energy is passed on. And we can see for our studies in natural sciences today, we can see how heat energy is passed on. And we can look at electricity and we can see how electrical energy is passed on. And when we talk about the passing on or the transferring of heat energy and electrical energy, we now come to a very good understanding of what conductivity means in science. So we're first of all going to look at heat conductivity. 
we're going to explore heat conductivity in much more detail later in the year because later in the year we're going to learn about energy in more detail but today we're just going to touch on what we mean by materials conducting heat so heat conductivity is the way in which heat energy is transferred and there's our link to conductivity passage through a material and the heat conductivity relates to how heat is transferred through different materials now i'm sure you you're pretty familiar with this idea that certain things get hotter to touch than other things so we need a little bit more vocabulary here to understand the certain things that get hotter than others. And I want you to think about if you were cooking some soup and you needed to stir the soup and you put a metal spoon in the pot to stir the soup and you left the metal spoon in the pot and you came back 15 minutes later to stir your soup again. If you touch that metal spoon, you could burn your hand. It's very hot. It wasn't as hot as that when I put it into the spoon, into the soup. But if you had a, used a wooden spoon to stir your soup, 15 minutes later, the wood would be just as cool as it was when you put it in. So this is everyday knowledge that you already have that help you understand that some things are able to conduct heat energy a lot better than others. So what is this new vocabulary we're going to focus on? Conductors and insulators. So from our breaking down of the concept of conductivity and what it means to conduct something, we understand that conductors are going to be materials that transfer the heat energy through themselves very well. So conductors are good transferers of heat energy. Solids are better conductors of heat energy than liquids or gases. And we know also that conductors transfer heat energy not only well, but also quite quickly. Now, what is going to be the opposite of the conductor? We could say that the conductor transfers that heat energy well and quickly. An insulator is going to prevent that heat energy from being transferred successfully. Insulators are poor conductors. So they are conductors that failed in their job to transfer heat energy. And this is actually a good thing. This is where your wooden spoon inside the pot becomes very important because in insulators, heat energy is conducted or transferred slowly. That allows us to put certain materials around implements that might get very hot so that we don't burn ourselves. So let's decide if these objects are conductors and we will simply put a C if it's a good conductor or an I if it's an insulator of heat energy. So I want you to think about your everyday experience of science and think about if we left that object in hot water or outside in the sun, would it get hot or would it stay cool? So we've already spoken about a metal spoon being a good conductor of heat energy, but a wooden spoon being a good insulator and a poor conductor. This also relates to the pot that we're using to cook our food in. Is the pot a good conductor or is it an insulator? The pot is metal and solid. It is a good conductor of heat energy and it has to be. We can't really make our pot out of wood because the food inside it wouldn't get the heat energy transferred to it through the pot and therefore it wouldn't cook. What about 
these metal coins. Have you ever left some coins outside or you've picked up a coin that someone else has dropped from the street? Is it cool or is it hot? Well, we know that in the heat, the metal of these coins becomes very warm, which means that the metal making up the coins that make up our money is a good conductor of heat. What about these boots? Now, these boots are made of fabric and a kind of plastic or rubber, maybe. Are they good conductors or are they good insulators? If you walked on something very cold, like snow or ice, would your feet get very, very cold? If you walked on something hot, would your feet get very hot? Think about firemen and how firefighters wear big rubber boots. This means that both the fabric and the rubber are good insulators rather than conductors. In the cold, they keep our feet nice and warm. In very hot areas, they keep our feet nice and cool. What about polystyrene or some egg cartons are made out of a paper, recycled paper mache kind of product? Are they good insulators or are they good conductors? Well, if your egg carton was a good conductor of heat energy, what would happen to all the eggs stored inside them? They would cook before you even got them home. So our egg carton is a good insulator. What about water? Is it a good insulator or is it a good conductor of heat energy? We know that liquids are poor conductors, so we could say that water, like air, is an insulator in terms of heat energy. What about fabrics that make up your skippers and wool for jerseys? They are good insulators rather than conductors. Remember right at the beginning of our learning about properties of matter, we spoke about a gold car. Would a gold car be the best, would gold be the best material to make our car? Definitely not. Can you imagine how hot it would become here inside the car? So we know that gold, once again, in its metal state, in its solid metal state, is a very good conductor. If we turn our attention attention now to electrical conductivity and we are going to explore electricity lots more later this year we see that electrical conductivity is the way in which electrical energy is transferred through materials so we know that certain materials that need to conduct electricity are particularly made out of metals. So copper wires inside our wires that we see in our plugs, the copper is the good conductor of electrical energy, but the plastic or rubber coating is a good insulator so that if we picked up the wires, we don't get the electricity conducted into us and we get an electrical shock. So in the same way as we had conductors and insulators of heat energy, we have conductors, which are good transferers of electricity. We know that carbon, we know that water, and we said metals, earth, the soil, they're good conductors. Whereas insulators don't conduct electricity. So rubber, plastics, glass, and air around us are good insulators. And so we've learned a little bit about our last property of matter, physical property, which is this idea of conductivity. And I hope you understand precisely what conductivity means after today's lesson but I look forward to seeing you for our next lesson so for today this is Helen saying goodbye